Super Radio Brothers Highlight Movie Review. Yes, that's right. Super Radio Brother Highlights Movie Review. And you read the title right. The Batman, DC's very first Marvel movie. And I'm not joking. I do think that's the case. But before we get to that, let me show you my credentials. Here they are. What's this here? Batman. It's a, what is that? Batman. What are these things? These are my credentials. This is showing you that I'm an expert. These are comic books. Batman. Bat, well, that's a Joker comic book, but still, Batman comic books make me an expert. It's basically my PhD in this conversation. You go to see a doctor about your health, you want to see that PhD, it makes you comfortable. Well, now you know you're in good hands. You may not know what a comic book is. Well, ancient man, millions of years ago, this is how he enjoyed these great characters, Batman, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Superman. You had to read comic books, but nowadays you have these big multi hundreds of million dollar pictures that they put together and we get to see the Batman. Okay, let's get to the Batman, DC's very first Marvel movie. First of all, one of the things I really loved about this movie was Gotham City itself. It was definitely a character in this film. Uh, like it was alive. It wasn't just a city. It was a living being, its own character. And it just looked amazing. It set the tone for the film. It looked very much like movies like Seven or Saw. It had that feeling, but it was Gotham City. And it was very special. To me, in my opinion, the very best looking Gotham City in the history of Batman cinema. Now you move on. Let's talk about the title role. Robert Pattinson, and you look at just the rich lineage of great Batman actors all the way back to Adam West. You're talking about Michael Keaton. And of course, recently, you know who I'm talking about. Where is he? <laughs> Christian Bale and that whole run, which was great. And when people started thinking about Batman, they thought about that Christian Bale voice with Pattinson. You had a very different take on how the Batman sounds. You know, you had uh, from Christian Bale, he was like, where is he? Well, the Pattinson, it was a little softer, and he had the whisper of, I am vengeance. So that was Pattinson's take, and I thought it was different, and it's just hard to be different when you've seen the character played a certain way for so long, and as successful as the Christian Bale Batman was. So Pattinson also, there were some odd things in here. He, uh, I, maybe there was a little holdover from the Twilight Saga, I didn't notice it at first, but my wife started telling me he still has the vampire walk. He has the uh, the Robert Pattinson vampire walk from Twilight. And I wondered what she was talking about. And, and she uh, <laughs> she showed me what she was talking about. I said, yeah, that's true. It is. And here's an example of the Pattinson Batman vampire walk. One of the things different about the Batman, taking center stage is usually the villains and Batman's relationship, Bruce Wayne's relationship with Alfred, right? Alfred Pennyworth, who's basically like a father to him, the butler, the guy who's running everything behind the scenes. Well, in this movie, Alfred was pretty near non-existent, played by Andy Serkis, who we all know from Lord of the Rings fame, Gollum, 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 right? A, a pretty great actor, been around forever, has a chance to play Alfred. And it was the smallest role I've ever seen for an Alfred. And maybe he has two or three scenes in the movie, barely any lines. But the movie does not concentrate on Bruce Wayne's relationship with Alfred. It concentrates on his relationship with Jim Gordon right? The commissioner, not the commissioner yet in this movie, because in this movie, it's set in year two of the Batman, which is pretty exciting. He's not at his highest powers yet as Batman. And I thought that Jeffrey Wright was spectacular as Jim Gordon. I loved it. And this is where the movie really shines, is showing that relationship between the Batman and Jim Gordon, and how early on they were able to develop this partnership in fighting crime in Gotham City. So I thought it really excelled at that. So minus the Alfred uh, relationship, they really emphasized the Jim Gordon relationship, which allowed them to tell a story that focused on Batman 
the detective, right? Now you're saying, you haven't told me yet why this is the first Marvel movie by DC. Well, I'm getting there. Hold on. Wait a second. Slow your roll, bro. We're going to get there in one second. So, and, and here we go. As far as the villains are concerned, you had Paul Dano as the Riddler and, of course, Colin Farrell as the Penguin. Here's where I start to have a problem with the movie, okay? Um, in my opinion, for the villain to be successful in a Batman movie, and usually when Batman movies have great villains, that's when they really shine. I, I always go back to Batman 89 and the performance from Jack Nicholson, even Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight was absolutely incredible. You know, they steal the show. I think Jack Nicholson made a million dollars more than Michael Keaton did in that very first Batman movie in Batman 89. So it's a lot of times you look for the villain to shine in the Batman movie. But in my opinion, in order for that to happen, the villain has to be somewhat recognizable to the classic interpretation or the source materials interpretation of that character. Even look at Heath Ledger. There were definitely some dramatic differences from the classic version, the scars on the face that made the smile. These were all really cool, dark alterations to the character. However, key word, the character was still recognizable, all right? And I think that is extremely important. And when you get to Paul Dano as the Riddler, He's not recognizable at all. It, it, you put him in a lineup of, of Batman's rogues gallery and you would not know who the heck this guy is. As a matter of fact, I just think it takes away from the dramatic effect of the character. It was possible to have your dark seven style detective movie without covering up Paul Dano and making him unrecognizable as the Riddler. So I think it fails in that regard. I also think the Riddler's story arc in the movie misses the point in so many ways. First of all, those of us who know the classic version of the Riddler, he's a narcissist. He's in this to prove that he's smarter than everyone else, especially smarter than the Batman. He's just smarter than you, okay? And that's why he's committing crimes. That's why he's putting people's lives in danger because he is a narcissist. In a way, the movie tries to make Paul Dano someone who's against corruption and has a righteous reason behind his acts, behind his horrific acts, right? This is, the movie really reminds me of Saw with everything that the Riddler does. And that doesn't necessarily bother me, but I think there was a way to have this version of the Riddler and still have him somewhat recognizable. People complained about uh, the Bane character from the Bale films, and you couldn't understand what he was saying. Well, at the time, you couldn't understand what Paul Dano was saying. As a matter of fact, I think his Riddler shined the most when you actually saw his face. I mean, he looked pretty bizarre, and it was way more effective on ha having a chilling effect on me than that mask did. He, he looked like a cheap version of the imp in Pulp Fiction or something. It just wasn't working for me. There was a cool meme where uh, basically they said he looked like a green version of the yellow guys from Minion, right? From, from And I thought that was a, a great thought because that's exactly what he looked like. So I really didn't connect with the Paul Dano Riddler. As far as Colin Farrell as the Penguin, that's one that's a little harder to narrow down because even in the comic books, there have been so many different interpretations on how the Penguin looks and acts. Uh, at the bottom, the bottom line of his character, he is... A gangster, right? I just wish they would have given him something in the movie to be a little bit more recognizable as the penguin, like maybe an umbrella that fires bullets. You could still have a dark movie, but have the colorful aspects of the characters and what the comic book is all about. It can still be dark. And I think a lot of times with these movies, you mess up by trying to reinvent the wheel. So In order for a Batman villain in a comic book movie, or any movie, uh, uh, DC, Marvel, any comic book movie, I think the villains have to be somewhat recognizable to the source material. Not completely. Heath Ledger, great example, Dark Knight, but it's got to be recognizable to work for me. And the Riddler and Penguin didn't do that. So we get to the title of this video, The Batman, DC's very first Marvel movie. And that's basically where my thought comes from. Because if you look at the Marvel movies, everybody says 
The Marvel movies do this fantastic job with the heroes, but there's never a good villain in any Marvel movie. They missed the boat on that. Everybody's still waiting for that great performance from an actor as a villain in a Marvel movie. It always focuses on the heroes and their relationships. And, you know, the villains are kind of an afterthought. And I think that's the case in the Batman. The movie excels at giving you Batman's story here in year two, uh, building his relationship with uh, Lieutenant James Gordon, you know, again, brilliantly played by Jeffrey Wright. And uh, yeah, this is what Marvel movies are all about, right? They, they, they focus and excel at the great hero and his relationships and the villains in Afterthought. And I think that's exactly what the Batman gives you. And I, th I just thought it was really funny what inspired this whole video was I, I read an interview with the director, Matt Reeves, and he actually said, I would feel lost making a Marvel movie. Well, guess what? You made DC's very first Marvel movie. And you know what? It was still great. I loved it. And there you go. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this page. We're going to have plenty more content coming your way. And check out the Super Radio Brothers podcast available on all social media platforms. I'll see you in the highlights.